everybody, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kelly McDonald. I work for Detail Roofing, and with Detail Roofing today, we also have Michelle Wallace and Andrew Tate, uh, both of whom are account managers here at Detail Roofing. Um, so as this slide suggests, today we are going to be talking about safety, uh, specifically when it comes to working at heights. Uh, so just a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing today. Uh, for starters, we're going to look at why safety is so important, um, how to devise a safety plan, the fall protection hierarchy of controls, anchor systems, ladder safety, and elevated work platforms. At the end of the presentation, we will be having an open forum Q&A. However, if at any point you do have a question, please feel free to pose it in the chat and we will get around to it at the end. So as stated for starters, why is safety important? Um, ensuring that you have a safe working environment at all times while working at, at heights helps to ensure that you're reducing the risk of any falls, slips, or trips, uh, which can ultimately result in critical injury or even death. Um, Another thing to consider is even if you are not impacted physically um, by a fall or injury that is resulted from working at heights, um, there can be a lot of emotional trauma uh, from anybody that may be involved or have been on site at the time of any injuries that took place. Um, there could also be associated property damages or fines issued to anybody that is in violation of any of the codes. Um, so some of the regulations when it comes to working at heights, um, these are laws set out by the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Uh, the purpose of this act is to protect workers from hazardous work environments. Uh, the thing to keep in mind here is that these uh, laws and regulations weren't put in place because they thought, hmm, maybe we could be a little more cautious. Uh, they were put in place because of real life situations that happened um, to try and make, you know, uh, less injuries, less deaths, and overall a safer environment. Um, so the rule when it comes to uh, fall protection is that it is required if a worker is exposed to falling 10 feet or more, uh, also equal to about three meters. Um, there are some cases as well, maybe the fall won't be 10 feet or greater, uh, but if there is risk of falling uh, onto equipment or machinery, into hazardous materials or water, a uh, fall protection system would also be required in those cases. Um, any situation where a fall protection system is required, the worker uh, that is doing the work needs to be uh, trained in the safe use and equipment maintenance for that fall protection system. So some of the elements that can make a work environment unsafe, uh, for starters, lack of training, uh, especially when it comes to having to utilize a fall, uh, uh, fall protection system, such as a harness and everything that goes along with that. If you're not trained in what type of system you need or how to properly maintain and use it, uh, it becomes ultimately useless. Um, again, making sure that it is properly maintained and that there aren't any defects or damages to the system, very important to maintain a safe environment. Uh, weather is a big one. So some of the pictures that we have here and what we've been encountering in the last week or so since we got that big dumping of snow uh, is uh, snow and ice accumulation throughout roof surfaces. Um, so there are some instances, uh, in this case in particular, uh, we were looking at a leak situation, but the area directly above the roof or above the leak was at this uh, the peak of the sloped roof here. Um, so that was something that we were not able to safely access. Uh, fortunately, in this case, we were able to determine the issue and solution from the uh, interior attic space. Um, but again, some more time and consideration is going to be required uh, during periods of inclement weather because it's not always going to be the safest situation. Uh, this case down here, we had some really high winds a little while ago that actually blew the roof membrane off. Uh, so afterwards, we can go look at it. Uh, while the wind was blowing, this is not a situation where we would be able to safely access the roof and work because of the high gusts. Uh, poor job site housekeeping. 
can be a hazard due to uh, potential slips and trips um, and rushing to meet deadlines. A lot of the time when people are rushing, uh, you know, they're not thinking clearly, they're cutting corners, um, which can be incredibly unsafe. So with every single job and every single uh, work area, it is very important to devise a safety plan. Um, businesses are required to uh, have in-house sites a specific safety plans. Um, so even though there are guidelines and regulations set out in the Ontario or the Occupational Health and Safety Act, there's not one set guideline because realistically the conditions that uh, will make an area unsafe are going to be different uh, depending on the site that you're at. So completing an inspection every single time, even in the case of emergencies, is going to be very important to make sure that workers are safe at all times. Um, also making sure that any workers or anybody that's going to be present on the site both um, is aware of and understands the items outlined in the safety plan is very important. So some of the things to identify in a site-specific job uh, safety analysis, um, any items that are going to present a hazard such as falls, slips, and trips. Um, so this isn't, uh, like if we're looking at this aerial view here, we wouldn't want to just uh, determine the hazards in this orange area. We would need to look at each specific roof area because again, they are going to be different. After outlining what the potential hazards are, next you have to outline what you're going to do to uh, mitigate those hazards. So that might include determining what type of fall prediction system is going to be best for the job being completed, um, whether or not any work platforms are going to be utilized, and if it's possible to remove any items that may present a trip hazard. Um, determining a first aid plan um, and having a location for everybody to meet uh, if there is any sort of emergency. Uh, locating the nearest hospital, determining a rescue plan in case of a fall or serious injury, and uh, finally creating a plan for loading and unloading materials. Uh, so for example, we can sometimes run into jobs where we're, uh, it requires a, a high amount of materials and it could be really heavy materials as well. So in that case, we wanna see if there are options to potentially crane load uh, the materials onto the roof so that we don't have uh, guys lifting them or um, hoisting them up in a way that may not be safe. So when it comes to choosing a fall protection system, the OSHA has what's called a hier hier sorry, hierarchy of uh, fall protection controls. Um, so basically starting at the top of the list here and in the diagram going down, um, these are the most preferred and most perfect, uh, most uh, effective methods down to the lower preferred and least per, uh, effective methods. Um, so the first one, which somewhat hard to do in roofing is uh, eliminating the hazard by not working at a height. Um, in some situations, this may include working off of the ground, but using things like extensions and other tools to access the area, uh, maybe for painting or something like that, instead of working off of a ladder. Um, guardrails or barrier systems would be the next best option um, because again, they are going to prevent falls uh, because of the fact that they're creating basically a wall or a barrier uh, to limit any fall uh, hazard. Um, the three most common ones that we're gonna look at a little bit further that are underlined here, uh, travel restraint, fall restricting and fall arrest. So these would all be systems that would require um, a harness with the lifeline, rope grab, lanyard, and other uh, equipment such as that. So the first one, uh, travel restraint, this is the preferred method of uh, fall protection equipment. So in this case, um, the idea is that the worker is not capable of falling off of the edge of the building or wherever the hazard is because they're anchored off from behind and the lifeline is reduced so that they, if once it's maxed out, they cannot physically go any further. Um, in this case, a plan <clears throat> needs to be determined to figure out exactly how much of the lifeline you need um, to stop yourself from moving past uh, 
past the point that is going to become a hazard. Um, Next, we will look at fall restricting. Um, so this one is commonly used um, if working off a ladder is required. So that might be in a confined space or uh, telecommunications or drilling rigs. Um, so the idea here is that you would have a harness uh, with the D-ring at the front. Um, and then if you are anchored off, this system stops you. Um, it limits the worker's fall to a distance of no more than two feet. Um, so as you can see in the diagram here, if this person were to slip and fall backwards, again, they would only drop down to two feet as, a as opposed to falling any further than that and seriously injuring themselves. Uh, fall arrest, there is uh, a lot to know and consider when it comes to fall arrest, but we're just going to cover uh, a few of the basics here. Um, so the idea of fall arrest is to prevent the worker from hitting the ground or any objects below uh, the work area. So realistically, if a fall arrest system is deployed, that means the person has gone off the edge of the roof surface or the work area, uh, but they do have a system in place to catch them from uh, uh, falling and hitting the ground and critically injuring themselves or potentially dying. Um, every single time the system is used, it is imperative that all of the elements of the equipment are inspected um, because it literally is holding your life in, on the line, right? So you want to make sure that, you know, the rope grab or the rope itself, the lifeline is not frayed and uh, doesn't have the ability to snap or that the harness is not, uh, again, frayed or put on improperly. Um, some math is involved here to determine the fall um, clearance. Um, it's not just the height of the worker. You also have to keep in mind how long the lanyard is, uh, the shock absorber, and uh, give yourself a safety distance of about three feet from the ground or object that could uh, present a hazard. Um, one thing to consider here is that you're not meant to stay in fall arrest for a long period of time. Um, the harness will cut off the circulation in your legs and can lead to suspension trauma. Uh, so that's why it's also imperative to have a rescue plan in your site safety uh, job analysis so that if this were to happen, you know exactly how you're going to get out of that situation. Um, so we actually had a situation um, not too long ago at our head office in British Columbia, where we were working off of an area that uh, was quite small, but also very high up in the air. Sorry. Sorry. So yes, uh, in this situation here, uh, a fall arrest system was required. Um, and again, it's not just considering where you're going, where it's potential to drop from here to the ground. Uh, you have to consider any objects below that you may hit if you were go to go into fall arrest. Um, so looking at this and some other examples, it poses the question, if you are working at heights, where can you tie off? Probably one of the most obvious answers is engineered anchor systems. Uh, so most of the buildings that we work at do have permanent engineered anchors installed either uh, along the walls or in the actual roof surface themselves. Um, so it is required that these are um, uh, certified and checked on an annual basis by a certified engineer. However, uh, workers should be double checking them um, just to make sure that they are safe and adequate to use each time they're tying off. Um, you know, if you were to grab onto one of these wall anchors and give it a shake and it was loose or there was damage to the anchor surrounding area, that's not something that you wanna be tying off to because it's not going to provide you uh, with a safe work environment. Um, so something that we do see from time to time, like in this photo here, are uh, roof surfaces or other work areas that don't have any engineered uh, anchors built into the roof system. So in a case like this, or the photo that we saw uh, from the job in BC, what are the options? Um, even if there are not permanent anchors installed, workers still need to have a method of fall protection and an area to tie off. 
Um, so some of the options may include, uh, in the top picture over here, it's a bit hard to see, but we have a engineered lifeline. Um, again, this can't just be a, a rope or a wire that you hang out. It needs to be engineered. Um, it could be, like in the case from the BC job, existing structural elements uh, such as support beams. Um, one of the most common ones that we would use is fixed temporary anchors. So there are literally thousands of different types of anchors, uh, depending on the specifications of the job um, and where they're being installed. Um, it's just important to check what the loaded rate on them is and the exact specifications for how to install them. Um, so in this case here, we do have uh, a portable anchor um, with various weights around it. Uh, one of the ones that we run into most often is on uh, sloped shingled roofs. In those cases, we would need to install an anchor at the peak of the roof while completing a job. And then once the job is complete, we would uh, cover that over with, shingle, with new shingles uh, so that it wouldn't be presenting any sort of leak issue. Um, working off of ladders. Um, so working off a ladder is, first of all, the number one contributor of faults. Uh, the main purpose of the ladder is for access and egress. So while it's not prohibited, it is not recommended to complete work off of a ladder unless it is absolutely necessary and there is no other way to get a job done. Um, some things to consider when working off of a ladder. Um, again, it's not preferred. So if it's possible to work off of a, a work platform, that is the better and safer option. Um, whether it's using a ladder for access or for work, uh, three points of contact, and that's limb contact, must be maintained at all times. Uh, the top and the bottom of the ladder have to be secured. Uh, and if work is being performed off of a ladder, the worker must be in fall protection equipment. Uh, while working or accessing the ladder, uh, you must ensure that your body remains inside the rails at all times. Um, so again, preferred method of work uh, instead of a ladder would be an elevated work platform. Um, so there is a variety of equipment available, whether for purchase or for rental, um, that's just gonna create a more secure and safer workspace. Each type of equipment has its own guidelines and regulations for use. Um, and in any case, additional training is going to be required to utilize this. Somebody who is uh, trained in working at heights and the fundamentals of fall protection is not going to be able to hop on the boom list, lift in this picture um, and start using it because it is a different training that is required. Uh, so some of the most common types of work platforms that can be utilized, uh, scaffolding is a big one. So uh, if it's under 15 feet, it is typically something that you can get from a hardware store, uh, but then there's also engineered uh, scaffolding that can be set up by a scaffolding company. Um, scissor lifts or boom lifts. Uh, boom lifts, there are a ton of different types. There are the uh, articulating and straight boom lifts, crawler boom lifts. Uh, you have the genies, like the single man boom lifts, uh, cherry pickers, uh, bosun chair, which would be um, essentially like a chair that uh, descends down the side of the building, and then a swing stage or elevated work platform. Um, again, deciding which one is going to be best for the type of job uh, is going to be sp specific to um, what exactly is going on, but any of these methods would be preferred to working directly off of a ladder. Uh, so just a quick overview, um, anytime uh, work is being performed at a height, um, safety must be priorita prioritized in order to prevent slips, trips, and falls that can result in critical injury or death. Uh, inspection of the work site is critical to maintaining a safe space at all times and to determining a job site specific safety plan. Um, ensuring that the correct fall protection method is chosen for the job is very important, as well as making sure that the equipment is well maintained and in good use for the job each time you're using it. Um, and then finally, ladders, again, 
are uh, specifically meant for access and egress and whenever possible, it should be avoided doing any work directly from a ladder. So now we're going to open it up to any questions. Kelly, I, I saw a couple of comments in the chat from Dana um, about some window companies using uh, a rope around a vent, as well as another window company using the legs of a cooling tower. Um, yeah, so those um, items such as uh, vents or um, I guess the legs of the cooling tower, um, those would not be areas to tie off to. Um, again, it would either need to be a fixed anchor, a permanent anchor, or something that is uh, part of the structure of the building that is engineered and structurally sound. Um, basically, any uh, like anchor should be able to withstand uh, the load of about a mid-sized car, so about 3,600 pounds. Very good. So, and also um, Diana is asking who is responsible for developing the safety plan? Um, so the safety plan, it is, it is the responsibility of uh, the employer. So if we were doing the job, it would be our job in-house to develop that plan. Um, so we do have a uh, foreman going out to each job who um, assess the area and uh, determine the uh, site safety analysis for the specific job, um, which is then reviewed by our senior team and health and safety team, um, who ensure that everything is going to be running smoothly for the job. Good. Yeah, it's definitely right. for the contractors, just to keep in mind is that um, not everybody follows the same strict safety procedures. So I guess it's sort of a, almost a community responsibility to keep an eye and make sure that everybody's operating safely. Perfect. And I've got a question from Paulette. Uh, does it matter the height of the ladder before safety fall harness is required? No, it's the height you're working from, not the height of the ladder. And Stan asks, how does a worker tie off when climbing to a roof with a ladder? So I, I think for that, Stan, I think what it is more important is the ladder is tied off as opposed to the worker. Um, you're, it's first, first on the roof, first off, or last off, sorry. Um, that uh, gets the access point connected and puts the temporary anchors on to step on and off. It's to make sure that the surface isn't too icy or anything when you step on the roof initially. And, and what Andy said as well as making sure the ladder is secured before you step off of it. Yeah. And in the situation of a slope roof stand, it, it's uh, temporary anchors are installed on the peak of the roof. Uh, Diana asks, how often is the safety plan reviewed by the company? Uh, that would be daily. Yeah, for every new job, every time we reaccess the building, we reevaluate the safety procedure. That's why often, um, if you work with us, you'll hear us when we talk about safety setup for each job um, and the time consuming nature of that. Paulette asks, is there a designated person that reviews the safety plan? We have our superintendent um, that reviews the the overall photos and job criteria. So they also check, as well as we do spot site safety checks with our crews, making sure that all their paperwork and everything is in order. I'm not sure if that's, if other companies do that, that's just our internal company procedures. Paulette says this has been, excuse me, this has been very informative. Thanks, Paulette. Does anyone else have any further questions? If anybody does have any questions or concerns about uh, safety issues with jobs or um, any safety hazards in their complexes, you feel free to reach out to us and we can always uh, take a look and help you with that. Yes, our, uh, our information is on the screen here. So our phone number and uh, our service email, um, which our whole team is a part of. So any issues, any questions you have can be addressed here. I also will send a follow-up email out. Um, so if you do have any questions following that, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we'll also be including a link to our YouTube channel, which has links to any other webinars that we have presented in the past. And if there are any subjects that you would like covered in the future, please feel free to let us know, uh, and we will cover that in the near future as well. Kelly, I, I've got one more thing from Dana saying, uh, where'd it go, sorry. Uh, maybe we can ask the worker to present the card that they were trained for fall protection. 
Uh, you could definitely do that because uh, workers are required to have that all on them at all times while working at heights. That's a great idea. Yeah, that is something that if the Ministry of Labor were to come by and ask somebody to present that card and they didn't have it, that is something that the worker individually can be fined for. Okay, great. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And as I said, if you do have any questions or would like a topic covered in the future, uh, please feel free to let us know. And in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye.